Hello, you've decided to join us, have you? This is Dudley. <laughs> And welcome to my channel I'm Mama Jade um, today I'm just going to put forward a mukbang video does a smoothie class as a mukbang can you use a smoothie as a mukbang I don't know you tell me but I'm that's what I'm having I'm having a smoothie um, I'm totally in love with this smoothie oh my god it is just so the best it's raspberries orange juice and papaya and I also do it with mango I find it's actually a little bit more silky on the palate with mango um, but I like both look mm. papaya it's just so good it is just loaded with enzymes which is just so awesome for your digestion and I just love papaya it is such a brilliant fruit and it's one of those fruits that people go oh I don't like it it's like, if you don't like papaya, you haven't tried papaya. You've had imported crap that's been picked too early and it tastes like vomit. That's generally the take on it. But if you have papaya in the tropics, trust me, you will love this fruit. And it's such an awesome fruit because you can buy it for so cheap. Like I pay about 85 cents a kilo for it and it's really filling and delicious and it doesn't have that pungent horrible smell that you get in the western world because you're not eating good fruit good fruit is tropical fruit that you find in the tropics you're just having a nice scratch here this is Dudley if you haven't heard about Dudley this is my Dudley do oh, I love this little dog I rescued him um, oh, about eight months ago was it about eight months ago I think it was about eight months ago I think last September where are we? Oh, nine months ago. Where does my time, where does my life go? Um, randomly just found him walking down the street and um, got told by one of the street people who his owner was and he spent his time predominantly locked in a cage. So he, he'd he got out and he'd ran away and I brought him back there and he got whacked on the head and just wasn't a nice experience. So anyway that's how I've ended up with this little Dudley do and he's just a beautiful little dog um, loving to death anyway that is not what I want to talk about today actually I don't even know what I'm gonna talk about I just decided I'm gonna put the video on I'm gonna make my smoothie um, this is the second thing I'm having for the day the first thing that I had was a green juice. I generally have green juices first thing in the morning. I like green juices first thing in the morning. Um, it's a great way to get your greens in. I usually juice half a kilo, which I believe is 1.1 pounds of greens every morning. And I juice about four cucumbers, a lemon, and a little bit of apple. When I say a little bit, I have two apples and some ginger. And I have that first thing in the morning. I occasionally have celery juice. Look, I don't get into the whole celery juice is the be all of the end all. Even though I've got a video that's had quite a few um, substantial amount of views on it about my celery juice. I do believe in the benefits of celery juice. I believe in the benefits of greens. I believe greens are just so vital to your body. And they've just got such a array of minerals that make your body come to life that I believe that you should be rotating your greens and having a range of different greens each morning so I generally rotate between celery spinach and bok choy because they're the greens that I've got available kale I don't generally juice because you just don't get enough juice out of it so I tend to if I have kale um, I tend to massage it and I only eat the leaves not the stem because the stems are just too hard for my body to digest or yours for that matter you know it's a funny thing um, I post a lot on Instagram um, I love Instagram I'm such an Instagrammer I love posting my food I post so many foods and recipes and everything daily um, if you want to uh, follow me on Instagram you can it's jade underscore tornquist um, 
but I receive a lot of random comments from people and it's funny I posted this picture the other day and this was just so yummy like seriously so yummy it was an ice cream and I've just bought an ice cream scoop um, because I just wanted to scoop things into little balls and make it look ice creamy so I've got my little balls of ice cream and I've made like this beautiful raspberry um, dressing on top which I'll put the link for that in the description if you want to make the raspberry sauce and I've also put you know a passion fruit and some bananas as well on there and it's all you know prettied up as you do and I put a post out about sugar and how wonderful sugar is for your body not the refined type of course the sugar found in fruit and of course it caught a few people's eyes and a few people have come in and even people who are regular followers of me have had to say their two cents worth which is fine I don't mind look I will either read your comments and not answer because I don't want to get into debates or I will um, respond um, but it's just so funny how incensed people get over a bowl of fruit and a few comments about eating fruit. Now, if I posted a humongous hamburger, some fries, um, a big Coke, and perhaps a sundae, and yeah, look, I'll put chicken nuggets in it too, the whole bit, I'm having a big smorgasbord, and I'm like, man, I just pegged out today, I just felt like eating, people say, it's okay, we all have days like that, we're allowed to do that, you know, people shouldn't be telling us what to eat. And that is the response that you see on these kind of posts, um, you know, especially the body positive movement, which, hey, I believe we should all be um, body positive and embrace our body, but hey, that doesn't mean telling people it's okay to sit there and gorge down on these foods. Not that I will go onto these pages and say anything as people feel that they need to come into mom. And, um, you know, I thought if I posted that, no one's going to say who, but I post some things about sugar and the benefits of it, how when we eat a predominantly fruit-based diet, the, uh, the fruit gets right into our cells and our body predominantly runs on glucose and it's just, well, it does run on glucose, especially our brain. And I said there, if we're not eating um, carbohydrates, if we're not getting um, our brain stimulated, we are dumbing down, which is true. You know, we need sugar to survive. And some of the comments have just been unreal. And, you know, of course, there's the balance. Now, let me tell you my views on balance. I think we should all have balance in our life. And I think I balance out my food very well. I have my fruit, I have my leafy greens to balance out my blood um, sugar levels and to get the minerals from greens because greens are alive. And I also have some nuts, seeds, avocado and some coconut meat. Yes, I know avocado is a fruit. Thanks for letting me know. Um, and I find that I balance that out very well. But when I hear the word balance, it always reminds me of Weight Watchers. Now, for those of you who don't know, years ago, I used to work for Weight Watchers. I actually worked for Weight Watchers, I think, for three years. Um, and look, I was grateful to Weight Watchers at the time. They were really the start of my um, weight loss journey, my health journey, and starting to educate me a little bit more on eating fruits and vegetables, because it is a big issue in Australia. We get into ruts, we eat a lot of takeout we eat a lot of fast food we eat a lot of sludgy high carbohydrate foods which I predominantly promote carbohydrates but we're eating lasagnas with meats and cheese and so it's the high fat high carbohydrates which causes absolute havoc in your body I mean seriously my eating before um, knocking on their door was like a whole cheeseburger, a uh, whole cheesecake. I would eat a whole cheesecake after eating um, half a 
big family size pizza um, and garlic bread and coke and I always like to have crisps on the side and then I would get some lollies uh, you probably call it candy or sweets if you're in England so I would always have some sweets and stuff and then I would sit there and gorge on a cheesecake or a cheese plate with brie and blue vein cheese and camembert and Swiss cheese and whatever and my crackers and I would sit there and eat that I was a gas so I I'm grateful to Weight Watchers in that sense but the one thing I got sick of teaching people because I knew um, it was hindering people was teaching people moderation now a big part of their program is selling their products and they have you know little packets of chips and little you know chocolate bars for two points or three points or whatever points it was they run on a point based system which is a calorie based system but they've turned it into some magical point system and it's a lot easier for people tracking points than it is for calories because you can remember something's two points, three points, four points over. So, well, that's 167 calories and that's 223. It's just so much. It, it's easier. So, I mean, it becomes a very popular program. And I think the one thing is with people as well, we like to be able to t be told that we can eat the things like so being told you can eat KFC as long as you fit it in your budget you can drink wine as long as you can fit uh, fit it in your budget you can have your cake and eat it too when you learn these things you say ah this programs for me and look if you're successful on the program which I was highly successful but I'm one of these people if I'm going to set my mind to something I either do it or I don't um, there's no in between and I, I'm an ex I have an extreme personality I openly admit that in the sense that I'm just gun ho bang I'm into this and that's it and the same way I have with my fruit lifestyle the same way I have with you know lots of different things I've done over the years giving up booze giving up drugs if I didn't have that persona I wouldn't be sober for 12 years coming up this September so that's a long time and you can't achieve these things without having that you know mindset so I was very successful at the program and I lost my weight and I kept it off and I wanted to scream to the world and let everyone know this is the program but I started working for the program and I was teaching other people how the program works and I would uh, I would see maybe up to three four hundred women a week so that's a lot of women and a few men maybe a handful but I was seeing a lot of people I did find men however if they did follow the program they're a lot more successful than women women seem to, seem to cave a lot differently to the way men do we've just look we've got hormones let's put it that way but the one thing that became apparent to me over the time was the products and I would you know be advocating these products and you would advocate you know different things oh that's okay but you can still eat that why don't you cut back here um, fill up on a salad and then you can still go and have your KFC for dinner or you can do this and whatever and I would notice that that the weight would just go like this. Very few people are successful at this program. And you're probably thinking, well, I've seen a lot of people that are successful, of course, because it's a worldwide industry. And if you have millions of people following your program, you are going to have successful people. Um, of course. But the fact of the matter is, only 5% of people are ever successful at a calorie restrictive diet. And out of that 5%, only 10 will keep their weight off for over a year. And then of course it lessens and lessens and lessens. So this one in a hundred people. That's a very, very small percentage. Most people just go like this and the reason they go like this is because they're still letting the foods into their lifestyle 
that are causing the ongoing triggers. So, for example, when you first start the program, you would you know, you're weighing and you're measuring everything. You're saying, okay, I will have half a cup of rice. I will have, you know, my veggies and I will still have some fried chips on the side because I've always wanted that. I'm just using that as an example. And let's say you can just have a cocky's claw full. Um, you will then start to say, I don't want to just have a cocky's claw full. And you won't actually say that, but your brain will start wanting to have more. You will keep drawing to the things that you actually want. For example, I this is long before I was vegan. I used to every night have a small packet of chips and a little chocolate bar, you know, the little fun size bars. I would have that and I would have a custard thing which was full of aspartame full of garbage um and that would be like one point and then it would be one point for my chocolate bar and one point for my chips or two points i don't know whatever it was and i would have that on the in the evening so i would save that and that, let's just say it was four or five let's just say it was five points now for five points you could make a proper filling meal yet yeah, I would save five points out of I think it was on 20 so a quarter I would save a quarter of my points to have garbage at the end of the night and what happens is eventually if you're not filling up during the day look I was very successful at this program for a long time but if you're not successful at filling up on this program the wheels are going to start to fall off because five points on garbage a quarter of your food on garbage is going to lead you two ways it's going to lead you to feeling hungry and when you're led to feel hungry and you've just had a small sample of a little wagon wheel a little packet of salt and vinegar chips or whatever it was that's going to send, you know, the serotonin in your brain's going, ooh. All of a sudden that says, I want more. So when you want more, you don't all of a sudden say, yeah, well, I'll just finish off with a celery stick. It doesn't work like that, especially when you have weak moments. And especially when you're new starting off and you have no idea how to put it all together. I mean, I had it so down pat where I was having, you know, I'd have an omelette this big for breakfast, but it would only have two eggs in it and I would just have all these egg whites. And, you know, I, I would work it out. So, I would work it out so I would fill up so I could have junk at the end of the day. And I would watch people over and over and over fall off the merry-go-round, off and off and off, and fall into binge eating because I was so hungry during the day. Let's say they'd have a little salad. Look, their head wasn't in fruitarian mode, raw vegan mode, I'm going to have a salad. They would have a little token salad, say, for lunch. By the time dinner comes and they've saved their points so they can have their KFC and their little wagon wheel and their packet of chips, they are starving and that's not going to fill them up. So you keep doing that for two, three, four days, all of a sudden, Pac-Man disease steps in. And you are eating absolutely everything in the house. Now, one day I fell into such a rut that I ate for 10 hours, 10 hours, because I had starved my body for so many months. I would fill up on Diet Pepsi Max. So I would, you know, the caffeine, the stimulant, to keep me going, to give me energy, because I had no energy, because I wasn't eating a high carbohydrate diet. I, I was eating low carb. I was I was filling up on egg whites, as I've mentioned before. Um, I was filling up on veggies. I was filling up at lunchtime. I would have just the smallest 
amount of pasta and then I would just bulk it up with this big salad. Admittedly, I was very good with bulking things up with vegetables and things like that. And of course, once you throw the protein in, um, like an egg or a chicken or whatever, that does keep you full for longer. I'm, I admit that. But I was also filling up on their aspartame foods like the zero point yogurts and things like that to keep myself going and my body was starving it was really really hungry and I'll never forget this I ate for 10 hours but you know what I ate I ate garbage I didn't all of a sudden you know just say oh, I'm gonna just have a big bowl of fruit and nourish my body I ate crap I sat there eating crackers and pastas and pizzas and you got no idea after 10 hours I was like comatized I was like Ugh. I had ate for 10 hours straight and this is when I really got an insight into starvation and I started to understand starvation and this is when I started, you know, to hit Google and I started searching through the net and I was thinking there has to be a better way. There has to be a better way to live than complete portion control and falling off the rails and binge eating. And I wanted to find another way, not just for me, for every woman who's been on the weight loss merry-go-round for probably most of their adult life and you know I've had women over the years cry in my arms they are just so tired of dieting they are just so tired of being overweight and they are just so tired of the addiction to these foods and this is why I hate the word moderation. Now let's just say I was a drug addict and I had told you I gave up cocaine. Would you turn around to me and say, you can have a line of coke as long as it's in moderation? No, you wouldn't. So when people are on a raw vegan diet, a lifestyle, I'm going to call it a lifestyle, it is a lifestyle, it's not a diet, screw diets, although what we eat is a diet, whether it's a junk food diet or whatever, but let's just call it a lifestyle. If somebody, me, is on a raw vegan lifestyle, predominantly high fruit, and I am putting out a statement saying I'm thriving and I have put out post after post after post about my eating addictions, my binge eating, my struggles, absolutely everything else. I have just put it out there on social media and then to tell me I need balance. You need this you need that no I don't now had I and I'm put I put it I'm putting out posts saying fruit has been the best thing for me for me I truly think it's the best thing for everybody but I put out my post saying this is why it's good for me this is what it's done for me now for me it really has helped me with my skin. I had cystic acne. I have had a lot of hormonal imbalances over the years and I'm still, I mean, I'm a lot better than what I was, but I'm still trying to deal with that. Um, I know my moods are a lot better when I'm on fruit. I feel great on fruit. I'm energized in, on fruit. I'm not lethargic on fruit. I am just alive on fruit. And for somebody to say, you need this in your diet, you need that, when I'm, I'm a food addict, and th things like that could trigger me, but they don't, but they could, 
because it's you don't know who you're dealing with you don't know who you're talking to why would you say that if I put out a post saying I'd given up drugs you wouldn't tell me that I need to have marijuana okay you don't need cocaine but perhaps you might like to get some morphine perhaps you might like some Valium who the hell would say that? Nobody's going to say that. I'm an alcoholic. I've given up drinking. Look, Jade, I think your biggest problem was vodka. But you'll be right on beer. Just drink beer. Nobody's going to say that. I have an eating addiction. I'm highly addicted to processed foods. Uh, I openly admit, even now, if I, if I had a few chips, I would be wanting chips for the next couple of days. When I call them chips, I mean crisps. I'm highly addicted. I'm so proud of myself for finding myself back on this lifestyle and I've been thriving on it for the last 18 months. I fell off the wagon prior to that for four months and I was on it for two years. So I know this lifestyle. I know what it's done for me. I know what it's done for my body. Why would you tell me that it's bad, it's wrong? I don't understand it. I don't get people. I truly don't get people. But these are the things we deal with in our society. And look, for me, I'm okay with it because no one ever has understood me. <laughs> my whole life, no one understands me. Um, no one understands my lifestyle. No one understands the way I want to live my life. Nobody gets me. And that's okay. They don't have to. I have to get me. Um, and I'm okay with comments and criticisms. But you don't know what somebody's dealing with to get where they are. Anyway, to cut a long story short, finally, thanks to the endless cycle of binge eating, I, felt I started to find my way to plants. And it hasn't been an easy journey for me. Um, trying to work out how to make this lifestyle work for me in a world where you're not swimming in the same school as anybody and you're all alone you're all alone on this lifestyle and your only friends on this lifestyle are in a computer or in a phone um, it's hard but if you want to make it work comments and criticisms a lot uh, apart you will make it work and that is why I share and I wanted to share with you today my little story which actually I had no plan on telling you this story but I just think it's really interesting the whole concept of that a lifestyle like Weight Watchers or Jenny Craig or any of these low calorie restrictive diets, they're highly socially acceptable. Nobody will think they're a weirdo for following them. People will be congratulating them. Nobody will be telling them that it's unhealthy. Um, nobody will be telling them that they're starving their body or anything like that. Nobody will say a word because it's all about moderation. Do, do, do. But what about if it was all about abundance? What about if it was all about thriving? What about if it was just all about waking up every morning and saying, thank God, I feel alive. And that is why I advocate this lifestyle day in, day out, whether people want to agree with it or not, but the ones that are smart enough to wake up will come follow that's it for the day. I'm the worst mukbanger. I thought if I had the smoothie, I could do this. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed my video. Leave a comment below, subscribe to my channel, and most importantly, be kind to the number one person in your life, you. See you soon.